à ceux qui n'en ont pas à ceux qui n'en ont pas Rosa Batteries basically convert chemical energy into electrical energy, and they do this by shuffling electrons back and forth between the anode and the cathode. We can harness the electron's movement as electricity. Batteries are super useful, but they're also quite sensitive. Lithium ion batteries in particular, which are found almost everywhere. Your laptop, cell phone, and your smartwatch, and now your EVs are all powered by lithium ion batteries. The thing with lithium ion batteries is that they're pretty much a walking fire hazard. The electrolyte, the solution that the anode and cathode are submerged in, is flammable. This is what causes all those Tesla fires that you may have seen on the news. When a battery overheats and explodes, it's known as thermal runaway. Thermal runaway gets even more likely as the battery ages and as it degrades. Thermal runaway is just one type of battery failure, but there are so many different types and they can be fatal. So as you can imagine, a lot of effort is put into preventing and predicting battery failure. One of the most common ways we do this is with a battery management system or BMS. Essentially, a BMS is just a piece of software that sits on your battery pack and its main job is to optimize the function of the battery. This means getting the maximum performance out of your battery, but also not letting it undergo failure. And this is actually a pretty tough line to walk because the indicators of battery failure aren't directly measurable. Some of the most common examples of these indicators are state of charge and state of health, both of which can be found in the settings section on your phone, interestingly enough. State of charge is basically how charged your battery is. So it's when your phone says it's 60% full. State of health, on the other hand, is how much capacity your battery has. So it's basically saying, how much energy can your battery store now compared to how much energy it could store when it was new? These parameters, because they're not directly measurable, have to be estimated. And the quality of these estimates determines both the safety and performance of your battery. There are three main categories that these estimation methods fall into. The first one is physics-based modeling. So this is basically taking everything that we know about physics and how subatomic particles behave and predicting how the battery is actually behaving on an atomic level. And so some examples of this would be an electrochemical model and coulomb counting. Coulomb counting is basically the idea that if you count the amount of electrons that enter and leave the battery, then you should be able to predict its state of charge. The second battery state estimation method is data-driven methods. So basically, I like to think of this as AI models because they're either machine learning or neural networks that basically look at past battery data and identify trends in it. And then they'll use those trends to predict how the battery should be operating now. The third one is hybrid models. And this basically combines the data-driven and physics-based models to get the best of both worlds. Some examples of this would be an extended Kalman filter and an adaptive filtering model. Data-driven methods, so AI, is viewed as a black box solution. And this is basically because we don't actually know where the model is getting its numbers from. And this actually isn't super useful because then we don't actually learn anything about the battery. Physics-based models, on the other hand, can be super complicated because they require a very deep understanding of what's happening with the subatomic particles. They can also be computationally expensive because you're basically trying to simulate millions of atoms. Given this, I decided to focus on hybrid models. Extended Kalman filters are one of the most commonly used battery state estimation methods. And if you're curious to learn more about the math behind it, I made an article and a video which I'll link down below in the description. At a high level, an extended Kalman filter basically makes a prediction, takes a measurement, and then combines the prediction and the measurement to return the most accurate estimate. Here's how I built an extended Kalman filter to estimate battery state of charge using an Arduino. <laughs> Say she knows it got me feeling some way now. She gon' wanna stay for more. I got it, I got it, I got it down. I ain't gotta say she knows it got me feeling some way now. She gon' wanna stay for more. The first thing you need to know about extended common filters is that it uses discrete time. So that means instead of time being continuous, it passes in steps. I find it easiest to think of this as time in terms of number of measurements. So let's say I take a measurement every one minute. That means every time a minute passes, I have now gone up one time step and I've also gathered one more measurement. Since an extended column filter is a hybrid model, I'm going to need both a physics-based model and a machine learning-based model. To get my physics-based model, I collected battery data in the form of an SOC OCV curve, which basically relates state of charge to open circuit voltage. Open circuit voltage is the battery voltage, so voltage across the two terminals when it's not connected to a load. To get this curve, I basically need to discharge my battery from 100% state of charge, so fully charged, to 0% state of charge, or completely discharged. 
and I need to measure voltage while I'm doing that. The idea here is that because I know which point is 100% state of charge and I know which point is 0% state of charge, I should be able to use that to figure out the open circuit voltage measurement for every single other state of charge value. The catch here though is that this is open circuit voltage, OCV, not terminal voltage. And these are two different things. Terminal voltage is when it's actually connected to a load, so when it's actually being used. And the problem is that this load is going to draw current from your battery and therefore it's going to actually change the voltage that you measure. So given that these are two different things, that means two things for me. One, I need a circuit that will let me measure open circuit voltage or at least something very close to it. And two, I need a way to relate open circuit voltage to terminal voltage or else my model is going to be completely useless in the real world. To get open circuit voltage data, you basically need to draw some current from your battery or discharge it slightly and then let the battery sit disconnect from everything and relax. Then you measure the voltage across the two terminals. To do a real OCV curve generation, it would take months. So I did not do that. I did something called a quasi OCV discharge, which basically speeds up the process at which the battery discharges. So it only took around five hours. I needed to discharge my battery at a constant current that was one fifth my capacity. So in my case, my capacity was about 800 milliamp hours. So I need to discharge it at a current about 160 milliamp hours. After many iterations, I created a circuit that would let me discharge my battery at constant current. And basically what's happening here is I have a buck converter connected to a resistor with both a voltage measurement and a current measurement sensor attached. I let this run for about five hours and it took about 17,000 measurements. After getting these measurements and plotting them, I saw that it fit what I expected my discharge curve to look like, which was really exciting because it matched that of a lithium iron phosphate battery. After that, I needed to get a function from this curve because while having all these data points was pretty cool, I couldn't actually do anything with it. If I had an equation to represent it, then I could actually use it in my code. So basically, I took what I knew, the 100% state of charge value and the 0% state of charge value, and assumed that the middle point would be about 50% state of charge. And this basically means that I assumed linear discharge, which given that it was actually at a constant current was probably a fair assumption to make, but it might not be 100% accurate. This equation let me create my state space model, which in my case is basically an equivalent circuit model or a simplified representation of my battery. I made something called an RC equivalent circuit model, which is basically a specific type that is not super, super simple, but it's not one of the most complicated ones either. And so I thought it was a fair medium to strike between oversimplifying and overcomplicating things. So this state space model allows me to predict based on physics, what my next state of charge value should be at the next time step. Next come my extended Kalman filter equations, which use trends and the error to update my prediction to return the most accurate one. As the extended Kalman filter iterates through each time step, it's calculating error, which helps the model improve over time. And this is where the machine learning bit comes in. It takes a number of my physics predicted value and a mathematically predicted value based on a measurement from the battery itself. So a measurement of the terminal voltage. And then given the error it calculated, it determines which of those estimates it trusts more. And then it weights them accordingly to combine them into an estimate that's better than either of them alone. So it basically returns the best guess based on two separate sources. This is exactly what's happening behind the scene when your phone says that it's say 75% charge. The cool thing now is that this should be able to take battery data from any point, even if it's not 100% charged, and it should be able to tell me what state of charge it is. Battery state of charge estimation is something that's absolutely crucial to battery function, but it all happens under the hood. So it was super cool to dive deep into the math behind it and even build out my own. When it comes to EVs and their increasing use, knowing state of charge is even more important because in your laptop, phone, smartwatch, these things only have one battery cell, but an EV has hundreds. And so we need to know both the state of charge and state of health of these individual cells so that we can optimize function of the battery pack as a whole. If you're curious, I'll link my GitHub down below that has all the code if you want to check it out. But with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.